It has been decades since I've even come close to wanting to buy Super Mario Brothers action figures. But these new The Super Mario Brothers movie action figures by Jack Specific have finally tempted me enough to take the plunge. When I was a kid, my first video game love was Super Mario Brothers on the Nintendo Entertainment System. The game, along with the Super Mario Brothers Super Show starring WWF Hall of Fame wrestler Captain Lou Albano, were staples of my youth. But unlike so many other properties of the 80s and 90s, I had the toughest time finding a Mario action figure to fight alongside all of my other hero action figures and adventures that I would make up with my toys. Then came the 1993 live action Super Mario Brothers film, and while it was not a hit with the critics, I liked it as a kid, but the thing I really liked is that it finally gave me some Super Mario Brothers action figures to add to my gallery of heroes. There hasn't been another set of Super Mario Brothers action figures that I've wanted to buy since that Ertl toy line. That is until these new Jack specific Super Mario Brothers in support of the first Mario Brothers movie since the one from the 90s. So it's been 30 years since I have bought any Super Mario Brothers action figure. So let's see how these turned out. Starting with the packaging, I really dig their approach here. I think putting it in, you know, an actual box with the window makes it feel a little bit more premium. These are more expensive than your typical Jack specific figures. And I've heard some people say it's reminiscent of, you know, a vintage NES case. I don't see it so much other than it's just a, a black box, but still I really dig how it showcases the figure. Seeing how good these figures looked in package is one of the main reasons why I was tempted to purchase these figures. I also love how you have images of the figures on the side of the box. So on that front alone, I think the packaging is really nice. Out of the package, starting with the Mario Brothers, I think these two are the best of the bunch. The articulation, the paint applications, and just the overall playability with these figures is absolutely fantastic. The Mario looks just like Mario from the video games and now the new movie. All the sculpted detail of his overalls, you can see all the stitching that would be on his overalls, uh, presumably because in the movie it looks a lot more detailed than, say, the video game. We also have little, you know, paint applications where the rivets would be on those overalls. Uh, the paint application on his shoes, you have different colors for the laces. For a mass-produced action figure, it has a lot of really great detail. But I think where this thing really shines is in its articulation. Uh, even though it's a small little character, uh, the articulation is fantastic. And it doesn't take away at all from the look of the figure. Sometimes adding a lot of articulation can cut up the sculpt in weird ways, but it actually looks really nice. And you can get it into a lot of different poses. The one area that lacks for articulation for me is in the head. Uh, there's just not a lot of movement. It's almost just a swivel cut. Uh, it would have been nice if they could have figured out a way to make a ball joint work because I think that would have taken, you know, this, I would say B plus, A minus figure all the way to A plus status. You could have gotten in any look or any pose that you would have wanted. Another cool feature about these figures are these lifelike eyes. They're kind of set behind this clear plastic and it gives this depth to them, this realism to them. And it kind of has that tracking eye effect uh, that, you know, Scooby-Doo paintings would have or something like that. Um, but I think it, it works really well. Like in the shots with my camera, you can kind of see the eye following along uh, with the panning camera. So I think it's really cool. Some people might think that's a little bit freaky, uh, but for me, I just think it adds another level to this figure that makes it extra special. Another minor gripe is the lack of accessories. I know it's a $20 figure. I would have thought we could have gotten maybe an extra set of hands thrown in. You only have kind of one open hand, one closed hand. That would have been nice to maybe have a closed fist hand. You know, I, I sometimes criticize company for throwing in too many hands with a toy, but this one uh, could have used a few more. Uh, the plunger is fine. You know, it's, it's a, he's a plumber. He's got a plunger, uh, but you know, some other accessories would have been nice as well. The Luigi figure is just as good as his brother. It has all the same details in the sculpting, in the paint applications. He has the lifelike eyes. Uh, he has the great articulation. I mean, another thing to mention about these figures are, you know, they have really big heads and kind of smaller bodies and that can lead to balance issues. But with Mario and Luigi, you can even get them to kind of running poses without any assistance and leave them sitting there. And that again is just a testament to the engineering and and the way they approach the articulation for this figure. He does suffer from the lack of head articulation. He kind of swivels side to side. There's no ball joint there. And he's lacking in accessories, much like his brother. No extra hands. You've got one flashlight accessory. Aside from the lack of head articulation and the lack of accessories, it's another fantastic figure. Moving on to some of the
of the more disappointing figures in the, the regular size releases. Princess Peach looks fantastic. She looks right on model. Uh, all the paint applications look great. All the sculpting detail looks fantastic. But my main problem with it is this big skirt. It's just, you know, one solid piece of plastic. There's no articulation here, and it really limits the articulation through the rest of the figure. The only decent points of articulation are in her arms, but other than that, the lack of head articulation, uh, the kind of waist doesn't really move that much, and, you know, she has feet sculpted on the bottom of the dress, but they don't really do anything. You know, I, it may just be part of the design of the figure, but maybe they could have gone with, you know, a softer skirt plastic to give her some leg articulation. Um, but in terms of posing Princess Peach, it's really limited. And when you pair that with the lack of accessories that the Mario Brothers had, she is a bit of a disappointing figure. I was actually surprised how much articulation they put into the Toad figure. He's got really great leg articulation and ankle rocker articulation that, you know, really surprised me. I thought they might have went the same route as the Princess Peach and just kind of made it a solid piece on the bottom to make it a little bit more stable since it is a shorter figure with a much larger head. But they decided to give it as much of their articulation as possible considering, you know, the design of the figure. But the problem I do have with it is this huge sculpted backpack. I realize, you know, this is probably a, a big part of the film. I haven't seen it yet. But the problem is you have this gigantic head, this heavy, solid backpack. And, you know, you can put the frying pan that he has inside the backpack. But really, with the frying pan in there, that huge backpack and this big head, he just falls over. There's nothing I can do to really get this guy to stand up other than, you know, using that extra articulation in the legs to kind of push him forward. But then at that point, you can't even really see the figure. You can get him to hold his frying pan and kind of stick it out to kind of uh, balance the figure a little bit. Um, but I don't know, maybe they could have made the backpack lighter. Maybe they could have made it removable. Uh, but because of this really heavy backpack, it really detracts from the overall figure. And the showstopper from this wave of figures is the Bowser figure. It is a big hulking presence on your toy shelf. I mean, and when you have it side by side with the Mario figure, it just, he looks big and menacing and totally awesome. And even with this being a big hunk of plastic, they did a pretty good job giving us a bunch of articulation uh, in his legs and his arms and his tail that they probably could have gotten away with not doing and just giving us solid pieces. We're all obviously gonna be sitting in one pose on a shelf, but I'm glad they gave us a lot of options for, you know, the posability and playability. One area that lacks articulation is in his head there's no articulation and that is to accommodate his really awesome action feature so when you get this guy out of package you can take his back shell off put in three AAA batteries and then you're going to take a little cap off the back of his head and fill it up with eight drops of water. But once you've got the batteries in, you've got the cap plugged back in, it is ready to have this cool fire breathing effect. And it is one of the coolest things ever. I know it's super simple, but really when I was posing this thing and, and setting it up for these different shots, I had so much fun with this action feature. Especially when I decided to turn off the lights and let the glow uh, from his mouth really shine and it really highlights all of the steam coming out of his mouth. It was a ton of fun. And for 29 bucks, this is already one of my favorite toy releases of the year. Uh, whether you're just uh, an adult collector like me or you have kids, uh, this one is going to be a hit no matter what your age is. I think they've made a ton of these things, but they're selling fast. And I think it's really due to this being a fantastic figure with great articulation and one of the coolest action features in a toy in a very long time. So it's been 30 years since I've wanted to go out and buy Mario toys. And I got to say, I am over the moon with how these toys turned out. I have still played Mario games over those 30 years, but no toys entice me to want to pick it up and buy it to put on my shelf somewhere but these are totally shelf worthy the way you can get them into different poses the fact that they look so on model they look like they kind of jump right off of the screen and that is really impressive considering these are you know off the shelf retail figures where a lot of times toy companies will cut a lot of corners because you know it's really just about getting figures on the shelf to help promote the film but no jack specific went out of their way to make highly articulated fantastically sculpted pitch perfect paint applicated figures for collectors and kids to buy. If you want to keep watching, check out this video. And until next time, hasta luego and goodbye.